In today's video, we are going to create a new tool crib inside of SwoodCam. So what we've done is we've already opened a part that's had the coordinate system set up and the machine selected. And you'll see that I've opened up the menu on the right hand side here. So there's a little pin button. If you've closed it, you can open that up and then pin it open so that it stays open for you. And then you'll also see that there's a whole bunch of different tools that they've already placed in here uh, out of the box. So you can see at the top, this is my G-code machine. The milling machine that I'm using or the router that I'm using is currently called G-code. That's basically the tools that I'm adding in here. And this is just a sample tool crib that they've created. But again, we can rename this and create our own as well. So we're going to work on the right hand side here. And you can see that there's three buttons at the top. And the first one here is going to be my tools library. So that's what we're going to talk about today. You will also notice that there's an aggregates library. This is where your aggregates and your saw blades are going to be. And then you also have the machinings library. And this is where your tool paths are going to be. So we are going to create a tool crib in our tools library. So we're going to start by right clicking on the machine and you'll see that there's an edit button in here. So if we choose edit, this is where we can set up the tool crib. So if you use the little drop down here, you can see all the tools are in here. There is a new button and a delete button at the top. So again, we can completely delete this whole tool crib if we want, or you can right click on it and rename it to whatever your machine is, delete all the different tools in here and then add the ones that you need. Um, and that's kind of how you can start from scratch. You do have quite a few different tools that are in here. Again, you can just kind of go through and overwrite them. If you're going to add a new tool, you can use this new button at the, on the left hand side here, but make sure that you're highlighting something first before you click on it. Because again, if you just click on it without highlighting where you want to put it, then it's not going to add anything in. So you can kind of see that in our main tool crib, we can add tools. So you can see there's a few different tools in the main tool crib. Then there's also some different folders that are available. So we can also create different folders, maybe for different projects or different profiling and create different folders to better organize your tool crib. So another option of creating different tools or creating different folders would be to right click on the actual machine. And you can see that there's quite a few different options in here. So again, this is how we rename this machine. You can also copy the full machine. So again, maybe you've got multiple different machines and you want to create the same tools, but maybe change a couple different features in them. Uh, we can just copy that machine. We can create new folders just by using this right click menu. Or again, like I said, you can create a new tool just right by right clicking on it. Um, again, if you want to add a tool to a folder, you've got again, the new tool option by right clicking on the actual folder. And if you right click on the actual tool itself, you can see that there's different options for these as well. Inside the actual tool, so this is kind of an example of a roughing cutter. That's the one that I've clicked on is this 18 millimeter roughing cutter. So the name, this is what they've named it. Below that is going to be the tool type. So you can see there's a huge drop down of a, a bunch of different tools. Uh, so they've cho chosen the roughing cutter. But again, you can see there's quite a few different options. Below that is all the different options that you can fill out based on the actual tool itself. There is inside your cutting settings, the option to change the direction. So clockwise or counterclockwise. Uh, then you've also got your spindle speed. So you're gonna wanna fill the spindle speed, the feed rate and the lower feed rate. So choose all of these because again, it's not gonna let you close this without filling out the information that it needs to use this. We've also got information for the vacuum. So you can also choose the position of where the suction hood is when you're cutting using this specific tool. And then under the miscellaneous, so again, there's little drop downs that aren't open, but uh, you do have different options under your miscellaneous for turning on uh, the deflector or the blower when this tool is being used. And then you've also got your default milling parameters. So these are default milling parameters based on the tool being used for specific tool paths. Uh, so you can kind of see that there's the down cut and up cut. You can choose that once that default setting has been selected, every time you use that tool for any tool path that you program in the CAM software, it's automatically going to choose that option for you. So again, it kind of saves you time instead of having to go in and change it every time in the tool path. 
You've also got the depth cut max. We can set this, you can kind of see that my cut length here. So this is the, the actual flute length. So that maybe would be my depth cut max, but you can again change that. So I can set this to 40 millimeters. Um, and then obviously I'm not gonna go over that flute length. There is also the, the full length is right beside that. So again, if you aren't sure what these are, just hover over them and it'll tell you what they are. All of these dimensions are going to change based on the tool that you're creating. So if we look at the top profile cutter, you can see there's multiple different dimensions uh, for that specific tool. Uh, molding profile, again, different options and different dimensions. So you can kind of adjust uh, multiple different settings based on which tool you're adding in. The tool type is this drop down here. So anytime you create a new tool, so if I'm gonna right click on my folder here and create a new tool, you can see again, this is called new tool right now because I haven't renamed it anything. But basically the first thing that I normally do is just choose my tool type first because then we can fill out kind of the most important features would be obviously the dimensions of that tool. So you can choose that tool type and then again, just start filling everything out for that tool. If I don't want that tool anymore, I can just choose that delete button. It's going to delete it from my list and I'm good to go. Once you're finished creating the tools in your library, you can press the little green check mark. If something hasn't been filled out, it's going to let you know before it closes. It's going to show up now in your G-Code machine under your tools library. Thanks for watching.